Hey, and welcome back, guys. We are here for the third video. I'm really happy to be here. I can't believe I made it here, but um, hi, welcome. I'm glad that you came back again if you were here before, and if you're brand new, then welcome. I hope you have a good time while you're here. This video style is completely different, and not just because I'm not against my blue wall in a different room of my house. It's actually um, different in the style of content that I'm putting into the video. I did not read a single book for the month of February, and it wasn't intentional. It was 100% just because I was in school all semester, and it got really heavy, and it was a lot of work, so I couldn't spend time reading, which sucked. But um, I finished a 30-page paper, so I feel like I should maybe get some, some praise and some credit for that. On my last video, I talked about Peter Pan, and I was so intrigued by the story because it kind of had like a dark element to it to me and I was so intrigued I was wrapped up in and needed to know more so I did what I always do I went down a rabbit hole and started digging about the author so I'm just gonna give you guys all of the useless information I have on J.M. Barry, James Matthew Barry, the author of Peter Pan and several other works in his day um, I hope that you enjoy it if you like this type of video great if not my bad. J.M. Barry was born James Matthew Barry on May 9th of 1860. He was born in Scotland to his father David Barry and his mother Margaret Ogilvy. Now his father David was a weaver and at that time in 1860 weaving was a pretty serious profession not to be confused with spinning. They had beef the weavers and the spinners but his mother, uh, his mother was a homemaker, and this job as a weaver that his father had allowed him to work from home a lot, which was great because they had a lot of children. Barry was born ninth out of ten children. Unfortunately, two passed away before he was born. On January 28th of 1867, his older brother David was out ice skating the day before his birthday and got into it with a friend of his, not physically into it, but collided into a friend of his and unfortunately fractured his skull and passed away. Now if you look it up anywhere online there is a debate as to what truly happened to his brother David. I think the most common story that I found was that this happened to him on the ice skating rink with his friend but there is theory and rumor out there that um, he had swelling on his brain about a week before he actually passed away and that it was possibly James Barry himself who was the friend that collided with him and caused his ultimate death. And that led to some other struggles down the line. Now, I personally don't know that that's true and I'm not here to spread a rumor about people that passed away a really long time ago. So um, do with that what you will. If you do any research on your own, you will come up with that same thing. So I just wanted to let you know. Now, Jamie's mother was very obviously devastated by the loss of her son, David. And it was pretty common knowledge that David was her favorite child. Apparently people knew it. It was widespread. So Jamie was in a position where he saw how much his mother was struggling and he wanted to do what he could. He was about six years old at the time. So he tried to comfort his mother and honor his brother by emulating David. He would whistle the same tunes. He would wear his clothes. He did everything he could to be just like him. One biography in a Peter Pan Trust makes mention of the fact that David wanted to be like him so much that around age 14 he actually physically stopped growing and was five feet for the remainder of his life. Barry wrote in his own biographical account of his mother that she once, you know, had him come into the room and when he walked in she said, is that you? Obviously referencing David, to which Jamie responded, no mom, it's not him, it's just me. Something about him recalling such a trivial moment, it's really sad. I feel like that is obviously something that stuck with him. It seems like such a small incident, but the fact that he recalled that in a biography about his mother as a pivotal moment, it's its pretty telling. He suffered with that a lot in his childhood, just not being able to live up to the expectations of his brother or fill the shoes of, of his brother. At one point, his mother did note that since his brother died at 13 and never turned 14, he would remain a boy forever and would never have to grow up. So Jamie grew up and attended the University of Edinburgh or Edinburgh. It's here, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. My bad. After he graduated, he spent two years writing for the Nottingham Journal, and in 1885, he relocated to London and got a job working as a freelance writer for a couple different publications. 
He wrote a lot of his works between 1888 and 1896, two of which in particular, When a Man Single and Sentimental Tommy, were both about a boy who grew up to be a very successful writer and came from the same hometown as him. In the year 1891, while he was searching for an actress to play the role of Nanny O'Brien in his play Walker London, a friend of his named Jerome K. Jerome introduced him to an actress named Mary Ansel. He and Mary hit it off straight out the gate. They were great friends and that was that was pretty much it of their relationship at the time. However, when Mary got sick in 1894, not 64, in 1894, Mary came over and took care of him and their relationship somehow grew from there to something that was more romantic of nature. The two of them actually ended up marrying that year in his hometown and then purchasing a property in Kensington. In the year 1900, 1900, the couple moved from their Kensington property to a place on Leinster Street, I believe it was called, Leinster Corner, um, which is a house that overlooked Kensington Gardens. And this is somewhere that to this day you can still go and see. It has a, a nameplate that has J and Barry on it. I'll put it on the screen. They also bought a summer home in Surrey at Black Lake Island, and they went off to vacation in Switzerland while they were in Switzerland for vacation, I'm sorry, for honeymoon, not vacation, for their honeymoon in Switzerland, they adopted a dog that was a St. Bernard and named it Portos. This dog played a really significant role in Mary's life and in Jamie's life. Now, I did also see that they got another dog in Newfoundland and that is the dog that the character Nana and Peter Pan is based on. In 1897, while he was taking a walk through Kensington Garden with his dog Portos, he had his first encounter with the Davies boys, who would go on to change his life forever and influence the story that we know and love today as Peter Pan. There were five Davies boys born to Arthur and Sylvia Llewellyn Davies. This is the spelling of that. There was George, John slash Jack, Michael, Peter, and Nico. These children were also the grandchildren of a really famous cartoonist and writer at the time named George de Marier. Again, his name is here. On this day in 1897, two of the Davies boys, actually three of the Davies boys, George, Jack, and baby Peter, were out with their nanny, Mary Hodges. Now, I'm not sure how their initial encounter took place, but I do know that he was a little bit of a found the boys. Um, he had, he was wiggling his ears, he was letting them play with Portos, Portos was dancing with him, and it was just, it was all good fun. He was telling them fairy tales and got really connected to the family really quickly. Now he was very famous at the time. Jan Barry had a lot of money and a lot of status. He was a really famous playwright. So people knew who he was, and he was probably strategically familiar with who these kids' grandparent was and wanted to get in with them as well. So Jamie got in with the Davies family really quickly and everybody was really receptive to him. The kids began calling him Uncle Jim. The only person who wasn't a big fan of him was Arthur Davies, the father of the five boys. Now Arthur Davies was an attorney at the time and apparently a very unsuccessful one. I don't think things were going well for him financially. So when you have somebody like James Berry who comes in as a father figure to your sons and pampering your wife and children, you kind of get a little bit of like a, a complex, understandably so. So even with this, this rift between James and Arthur, mostly from Arthur's end, the family still accompanied him to his summer house in 1901 at Black Lake Island that he and Mary purchased in Surrey. This trip to the summer house led to another of his more famous works that you may be familiar with called The Boy Castaways at Black Lake Island. This wasn't as popular, anywhere near as popular as Peter Pan, but it is one of his additional famous works. This was a picture book with photos of the Davies boys playing outside at Black Lake Island. It includes a lot of interesting photos and captions, but this is kind of how an excerpt from the book sounds. George was a fine, fearless youth and had now been a term at Wilkinson's. He was a modest withal. His chief fault was wanting to do all the shooting and carry the arrows inside his shirt. Jack is also brave as a lion, but he also has many faults and has a weakness, perhaps pardonable for a pretty face. Of Peter, I prefer to say nothing, hoping that the tale, as it is unwound, will show you he was a boy of deeds rather than of words, which was another of Jack's blemishes. 
now these stories of the boys hanging out on Black Lake Island really just featured in horse playing around like kids do. Um, there was a frightening looking pirate puppet named Captain Swarthy who the boys eventually captured in their, their play and hung from a tree and let the vultures finish him off. Kids played interestingly back in the day. Now some of these photos from this specific vacation combined with the fact that Barry was a grown man playing make-believe with these young boys naturally led to some speculation about the nature of his relationship with these kids. No matter where you look or what you look up is never really mentioned that it goes any further than him just being a very childlike grown man. Scholars and even his friends at the time have stated that while it was unconventional and probably very unhealthy, the relationship was not at all inappropriate. The youngest of the Davies boys, Nicholas or Nico, came out years later to say, and I quote, I don't believe Uncle Jim experienced what some would call stirring in his undergrowth for anyone, man, woman, or child. He was an innocent, unquote. Now that was, uh, that was interesting. Stirring in his undergrowth. That was one that I had not heard before and I'm probably gonna use because it's, it could be really funny if used at the right time, trust me. Now, while Barry was out developing this new life and relationship with all of the Davies children and the whole Davies family and strategically getting in with George DeMarie, his wife was probably feeling a little bit neglected at home. Mary Ansel had taken up interior design and gardening to keep herself busy and was writing books of her own. I'm gonna diverge again here to say, can you imagine what interior design might have looked like in 1901 because I'm very curious. Go down that rabbit hole if you must. I'll meet you there if you do. So in 1907, a friend of Mary and Jamie's named George Cannon or Cannon was going through a heartbreak or a breakup or something of the sort and uh, got really close to the family, started hanging out with Mary and Jamie a lot more. Around this time, Mary and George began to have an affair. This is 1907. Barry found out about this affair in 1909. Barry was getting pretty famous at this time. He'd written a lot of plays, he was well known around the area, and so he didn't really want to have a divorce in with all the good news of what's going on in his career. He approached Mary with a proposition and he's like, hey, look, if you could just uh, cut this guy off in this whole affair situation, we don't have to get divorced. And Mary said no. So then he approached her again and was like, okay, I hear you, I hear you, you want to go ahead and separate, you want to stay with George, I got it, nice guy, whatever, he was my friend, you know, um, so maybe instead of a divorce, we just do a legal separation. And um, to that, Mary responded with a uh, no. So at that time, Jamie did what he knew he had to do, and he sued Mary for infidelity and filed for divorce. At this time during this trial is when it came out that the couple had never consummated their marriage, which does kind of play more into the fact that he may have been an asexual and just not had those type of feelings for anybody. If you're wondering what went on to happen to Mary, she did marry her lover George, and unfortunately they did not have a very happy union. George had a mental breakdown a couple of years later and he ended up getting their housekeeper pregnant. Jamie and Mary appeared to have a pretty solid relationship even after the divorce. He ended up buying her a villa in 1920 after her separation from George and she lived in that villa until she died in 1950. When he passed away, which was a little bit before she did, he left an annuity in his will that, so that she'd be taken care of. He took care of her for the rest of her life. Now in the year 1902, Barry wrote the story, The Little White Bird, which was the first mention he ever made of the character Peter Pan. And Peter Pan looked very differently in this story than he did in Peter Pan that came later. He was an infant in this book and he left his nursery to go fly around Kensington Garden to play with the birds and the fairies. Um, apparently he was half boy and half bird and he traveled around by goat. And I'm very bothered by the fact that he was half bird and half boy but traveled by goat. In 1904, that was the first introduction of Peter Pan or the boy who wouldn't grow up as we know him today. And in that story, George Namarie, that cartoonist grandpa of the Davies boys, ended up playing both Mr. Darling and Captain Hook. Around this time, it also came out that Barry really intended for Peter Pan to be the villain of the story. 
However, it's debated in present day whether or not that was where he stood then or if that's where he stood a little bit later on. While he used the name Peter, he didn't actually mean Peter of the Davies Boys specifically. He made a interesting statement. I'm gonna call it interesting. And again, I quote, I always knew I got Peter Pan by rubbing the five of you violently together. That's what he is, a spark from all of you. So he was actually closest with George and Michael of the Davies Boys. The boy's father, Arthur Davies, passed away in 1907 and Sylvia passed away not too long after in 1910. In her passing, she left Barry as the legal guardian of the five boys. Now here's another thing that you might find is completely bizarre when you do the research, but apparently it was widely known or fairly known, or maybe it wasn't known until later, but James took a copy of Sylvia's will and adjusted it to make himself the legal guardian of the boys primarily. In her will, she had written Jenny, who I believe was her mother, and Mary having joint custody would be the ideal situation, but he adjusted it and said Jimmy, another name for James, and Mary, Sherry custody of the boys. Um, obviously, that's not okay, but it happened, and I guess he got away with it pretty well because he raised the boys into adulthood. Now, the oldest, George Davies, passed away in 1915, in World War One, Michael Davies actually drowned just before his 21st birthday and this one is another another thing that you'll find if you start doing some research. Many people believe that the boy that he drowned with was actually his lover and they were in some sort of pact to go together. Now this cannot be proven and I'm not going to make up rumors about people who are no longer with us or anybody for that matter. So. I will just leave that there so you can choose what to do with it. Uh, Peter actually lived longer than Barry himself, but unfortunately took his own life by jumping in front of the tube in 1960. He did experience a lot of bullying due to his association with the story Peter Pan, but or there's no way to confirm whether or not this was the reason that he, he did what he did. Barry himself passed away June 19th of 1937. He was 77 years old and he died of pneumonia. He left money to his ex-wife, um, to the Davies boys. He left all of the rights to Peter Pan, Peter and Kensington Gardens, Peter and Wendy, all of that to a children's hospital in London and they received royalties on it for a really long time. That is all of the background that I pulled together on, on James M. Barry. He is a very fascinating guy, very, very fascinating guy, also highly controversial. If you look back, there are people who either loved him or definitely did not like him. Uh, they were not, there were people who are on the side of, you know, this was unhealthy, this is unnatural, this is weird, he's a weird guy, and there's people who say he's a totally innocent man, very childlike, and went through a lot of trauma. I stand on him, indifference, pure indifference, but I can say that as far as the story of Peter Pan goes, I still get the same kind of, this is a little odd, feeling when I read it, and I still think it's whimsical, I think it's magical, and I think it's a really cool world to be in but it does have an inkling of is this written because of grief is this written because of an attempt to escape his real life in his adulthood who knows that's the background on on james and barry that was the video for february because i didn't read a book but i did read a lot of articles because I like to research people. This was a lot of fun for me and I'm hoping that I can kind of approach some of my other videos this way in the future because now I'm convinced I need to go down the rabbit hole of all of my favorite authors and figure out like what was going on in their heads back in the day and how did they become who they were. I think it could be really interesting. I know that this is not everybody's cup of tea but if you were interested and you did stick around the whole way through I really appreciate you and please let me know who you are down below because I, I found my people basically. I will be back next month hopefully with more book reviews but also with um, maybe an author story or two or, or something else. I don't know. I'm just happy to be here and creating something and putting my brain to work and doing something fun. If you have any recommendations, let me know. Any recommendations for authors to do a really ridiculous deep dive into, let me know. I'll probably go deeper on my next one. 
because it's intentional and I'm looking for something versus me just like pulling all this information together that I did about Barry just because I was curious about it after I finished the book. So consider liking this video if you did like the video. If you didn't like the video, dislike the video. I would like to know that too. And then um, subscribe if you want to see what I do next. I'm, I'm super excited. Okay, um, that's all.